Hello everybody, welcome back to Living Our American Dream, our YouTube channel. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than previous videos. Typically, I will take video segments and kind of narrate them as I go, and that's what you get in my videos. Today, uh, the difference is I've taken probably 40 minutes worth of video and I've compressed it into about 13 minutes, and some of it will be at uh, a higher speed, some of it will be at regular speed, but I'm going to mute the volume out of all of that and I'm going to narrate it as it goes. I'm going to do a voiceover. I'm going to see how that goes. Um, I think it'll actually uh, uh, be, be kind of neat. So anyway, enjoy this video about making maple syrup. Okay, so you can see our setup <clears throat> right from the get-go. It's the tractor, the carry-all, and a couple of barrels. These are food grade barrels that I picked up from um, uh, a food manufacturer, local food manufacturer. Uh, cleaned them up and basically our typical setup is to take as many of us as possible. Uh, there's five in my family, my wife, myself, and three kids and kind of make this a group effort to go out and collect the buckets, uh, buckets of sap. So you can see I got uh, Megan and Monica in the picture here. Um, what we'll do is, is kind of divide up areas of the woods and uh, combine buckets if possible. So ones that have a lot in them, obviously you got to carry them up individually. Ones that don't have a lot in them, uh, you, you can pour that into uh, another bucket and sometimes you can get three, four, five pails um, in one. Uh, kind of save you some trips but this particular day was a pretty good flow day as you can see right here uh, a steady drip like that uh, that's about as fast as I've seen one drip in the five years that I've been doing this so that bucket will believe it or not fill up in about a day uh, uh, one day at that rate uh, this particular tree is probably our highest producing tree that we tap uh, it's a cluster of maples, and I usually put three taps. You can see all of them in this in this view right here. Um, I'll put three taps in this cluster, and all three of these uh, produce the highest amount. Um, this year, I did tap some some smaller trees uh, down to the 10 to 12 inch range, uh, mainly because well, two reasons. Number one, I wanted to have all of my taps in the same location. And another reason is I wanted to see how those smaller trees fared. Now here you're going to see a cheesecloth over top of one of the barrels. So this is our first line of filtering. So any bugs, any tree bark, you know, dirt, leaves, that kind of stuff that found their way into the pails will get filtered out right here. Um, this time of year when we have ice, the ice will have to be kind of rinsed and, and separated, um, but that works fairly well as basically a first line of, of defense against getting gunk in there. So here we step into the shop and we're gonna take a look at the furnace setup. So what I'm pointing at here is a wood-fired furnace that I built, I fabricated myself, and I had a local fab shop make me that stainless steel pan. Above that is a vent hood that I had an HVAC uh, guy bend up for me out of galvanized uh, basically ductwork. That's hooked up to a ventilation fan which is a heavy duty bathroom fan and that evacuates all of my steam. That system I found works very well. Um, keeps all of the steam, all of the smoke out of the shop. Most days when you're trying to you know, uh, cook syrup down in this time of year it can get pretty nasty out windy rainy and uh, having the big shop there uh, my shop happens to have a television in it um, and a refrigerator and it, it's right close to the house so it just it makes it very convenient so here I'm transferring the sap from the barrels into the pan uh, just a manual process and I'm, I don't have any fancy tanks or elevated tanks with valves or RO systems or any of that. This is what I consider the old-fashioned way <coughs> excuse me of uh, making maple syrup. So we'll transfer 
probably about two thirds of that pail full. Uh, pour the ice right in there. And uh, you wanna make sure that you put sap in your pan before you start a fire. If you start a fire first or get going, uh, heating that pan up with nothing in it, it'll get too hot and it could warp the pan. It could crack the pan, it could crack the welds. So uh, uh, the next step here, um, actually I'm fast forwarding here. Uh, we're gonna go to a point where I have the barrel empty, um, actually both barrels empty. And uh, I've cooked down, so this, this time lapse here has, has fast forwarded several hours in the cooking process. I started with 60, that's six zero gallons of sap. And it took, I can burn off seven gallons an hour. Uh, but at this point, what you see in the picture here is all I have left, which is only a couple of gallons uh, down in the bottom of the pan. Um, so uh, you wanna make sure, in, in my case, I calculate how much by volume should be left without burning it. And then I kinda know when to take it off uh, and I finish in the house and you'll see some of that later in this video. Here I am going to show you the, I call it a kickstand, but I installed a, a small piece of uh, uh, metal framing with a kickstand under it for the purpose of being able to take off the syrup without burning it. Now I turn off my ventilation fan because when I pull this pan off of here a lot of heat is going to go up into that vent hood and if it gets my fan too hot it will damage the fan uh, yes I did learn that the hard way um, I do have a piece of stainless steel that I put over that uh, just to kind of keep some of the heat in there and, and not get everything so hot and also not to let the ash and stuff come flying out of the, the firebox there um, afterwards typically I'll, I'll plug the fan back in and that way any steam or excess heat or anything like that uh, can be vented out. You'll notice my kickstand tilts my pan away from the fire and at an angle uh, towards the camera. So all of the syrup gathers in one corner. And you can see this is not a divided pan. This is just a straight up batch process. Um, but uh, I now throw my cheesecloth over top of a stock pot which is the same pot that I'm going to use in the house to finish it and open the valve slow and this is our second filtering so this will take out any large pieces of you know flaked sugar sand or anything that has gathered up in the pan during cooking so fast forward another few hours we're going to take a look at the cooking process in the house now I monitor temperature in years past I simply cooked 219 degrees and then I was finished. This year, you can see, I am now going to use a hydrometer to, to actual uh, measure the actual density of the maple syrup to make sure that it is 100% is maple syrup. Um, now what we're doing here, by measuring the density, you're essentially checking the sugar content of that liquid. Now, I'm not even gonna tell you numbers here, because if you buy one of these hydrometers from the store, it'll have a little red mark on it that'll tell you, you know, uh, at 212 degrees, this is the temperature that you're looking for. So this is our first test run uh, doing this. I've not, I haven't used the hydrometer before. This is what it looks like. You can see the two red marks. The top one is for a hot test. The bottom one is for if it is uh, cold. And right now you can see it's just barely starting to float. So we're getting close, uh, but we're not there yet. Now, when your syrup gets to this point, you really need to be standing there watching it and paying attention for a couple of reasons. The first reason is it could boil over. Uh, the bubbles could get to the point where it boils over the pan, make a mess. The second reason is you're so close to being 100% sugar um, that it could solidify in the pan and then you have a real mess. Now here I'm gonna show you another way you can tell when you're getting close. When you stir it or agitate and the bubbles do that, uh, that means you're very, very close to finishing. So you can see I was at 219 degrees. I'm gonna check this one more time uh, here. 
and uh, you, you only see two checks in this video but I'm checking about every two to three minutes uh, in this case with this small of a batch I think we made about a gallon and a half of syrup out of this so it, it cooks down fairly quickly uh, relatively speaking the less you have the quicker it'll cook down the more surface area you have in your pan the quicker it'll cook down so I throw the hydrometer in there uh, this time and let's take a, a, a closer look here we'll zoom in and you'll be able to see um, there we go you'll be able to see as I kind of bob this up and down the top edge of the liquid is there and if I move this ever so gently I'm right at the the top mark uh, for the hot test for density so in the background you didn't see but I've already turned the flame off of the stock pot so as not to go any farther and from this point right here we are 100% maple syrup so the next step yeah there we're good to go so the next step is we're going to filter this now you want to filter your maple syrup I happen to use uh, filter cones or a, a filter cone frame and a, and a cone filter that's made for uh, vegetable oil in a restaurant uh, typically most folks will use an Orlon filter I have one of those also but I don't have a stand for it but you want to filter between 180 and 190 degrees you want it to be hot but you don't want your syrup to be over 190 because that will actually uh, allow more sugar sand to develop after the filtering process yes we did learn this the hard way also now one piece of advice I would tell you on filtering is be very patient. In my case, using this type of filter, uh, the filter will clog up and you will reach a point where it will not go through anymore. Uh, in that instance, I, I pour what's left in the cone back into the pan. Um, I put a new filter on and I continue the process. But this is what it looks like. You can see I clip my filter on so that it doesn't fall out. Uh, again, you just want to be patient. This is a, a pretty good flow in the very beginning. Uh, as time goes on and material catches in the filter, the filtering process becomes much slower. After you're filtered, um, I happen to use a stock pot. I filter into a stock pot that has a valve on it. And most of our syrup I put right in a wide mouth mason jar, a quart sized mason jar. Now, the reason for that is my wife uh, and I and our family we use most of our maple syrup for sweetening uh, in various things not just on pancakes and waffles and such so uh, in making cookies making bread uh, smoothies we'll use it as a sweetener in lieu of uh, granulated sugar in a lot of cases so having it in a bulk quart jar like this is just easy to handle easy to deal with we do pack some up in some jars, uh, a little more pretty uh, to give away to friends and family, but um, basically we just hot pack it. We don't uh, can it in any way. We put it in there hot and the jars actually are sanitized out of the oven. So everything is hot when we do this and just kind of sit them there. And over time, in, a, in an hour or so, the lid will, will kind of clamp down and you're good to go to store it that way so that's our finished product i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching and we will see you the next time around